Vladimir Putin was just in uh, the enclave, Russian enclave of Kaliningrad, right in the middle of the Balts uh, recently. Interesting. So yes, this is a big deal. 700 British Army vehicles are making their way to Poland for what's called Exercise Steadfast Defender. And meanwhile, according to Ukraine's armed forces, a Russian ship has been sunk off the coast of Russian-occupied Crimea. Now, Peter Zwack joins us now, the former US Army Brigadier General, who was America's military attaché to Moscow when Russia annexed Crimea in 2014. Hello to you, Peter. Yes, um, good afternoon, John, and, and to your uh, your viewers. Oh, you're welcome, welcome to the program. Can you tell us a little bit about this exercise preparing is it for a conventional invasion, if that, if that is an appropriate term, the idea of Russian troops pouring across the border into NATO territory? Well, I mean, those of us um, that are a few years over 40 remember the Cold War and the major reforger exercises. Uh, that occurred um, back in, in the Cold War, right up until 1988, where uh, major, major forces from the United States and then within NATO and Europe and UK, um, um, uh, it, was, uh, it was all about getting troops in a coordinated way to the front where there were a threat or an attack against a NATO Article 5 country. Article 5 is you attack one, everybody comes to their aid. This is a, this kind of has reminiscent of that. Um, 90,000 troops, 31 countries, uh, a number of them are Eastern European countries now, um, a lot of it on Polish territory, uh, close to the Balts. Uh, the, uh, the, the, I think the region, the Balts, especially feeling pressure. Um, the uh, Vladimir Putin was just in uh, the enclave, Russian enclave of Kaliningrad, right in the middle of the Balts uh, recently. Interesting. So, yes, this is a big deal. It's about interoperability. It's about getting your forces out there. Um, yes, English is sort of the primary language, and um, but interoperability, coordinating your staffs, getting your troops out there. Part of it is so important for NATO. Yes. And this yes. is a debate in my country. I'll stop here. It's you get NATO soldiers working side by side. And that's important too. And obviously Americans, America's presence in that in that combined force would be absolutely crucial. But now it's been called into question, Peter, hasn't it, by, by, the, by the presidential candidate, Donald Trump, who seeks a second term, saying that he would be happy to encourage Russia to do what the hell they like when it comes to NATO members who are not spending enough on, on defence, which would drive a stake through the heart of the alliance. Um, it is a um, dramatically unfortunate statement. It's ignorant. And it's, and it's done with a sense of not really understanding history. And it isn't just about troop capability. Um, it's about confidence. Because first and foremost, NATO is about an idea, collective defense. And anything that is stated that could shake the, the credibility or the feeling of a country close out there that uh, if the bad guys attack, that NATO isn't coming to their aid, hmm. that starts to shake the whole line. It was NATO that came to the United States' uh, support in 2001 after 9-11. Yeah, I, mean, I, was, I was reading just uh, today, one of, one of um, the former President Trump's senior advisors, Keith Kodak, is floating the idea of America or being ready to defend some NATO partners, but not others, of those who, who don't spend enough on on defense. I and mean, what do you think of that idea? And do you believe that NATO as it is, 30, 30 member member alliance, could it stand up to a Russian attack without American support? Actually, if Europe puts its head and shoulders into it, um, yes, because in the aggregate, Europe is bigger, not in size, but in uh, population, in, in, in uh, resources, um, and one would want to believe there would be the will to fight. There's the history of 1941 and 45 that haunts Europe, and that's something that's being bubbled up, and also the 1930s. And when you don't 
check and you don't look a a wannabe uh, invader in the eye and usher them the possibility of being able to cleave a weakness and take advantage of it. No, this is very, very important. I believe my country will pull it together. We've got some ugly politics going on, um, but I would say overwhelmingly, the people that matter, uh, most of the people that matter are absolutely with, with NATO. It's the old saying about allies. The only thing worse than an ally is no allies at all. And they're always, and I've been on NATO staffs, I served in Kosovo and Afghanistan with NATO. It's so important also, and I touched on it, that you get your troops and staffs working together. And that breaks down, if you will, geographical and, and cultural walls about your allies and all of that. No, I believe we're going to sort it out I was appalled by the statement. I'm not afraid to say that. And, um, but I, I, I got to believe that in the end, uh, even, even on the opposition side, many of them bipartisan that, that were afraid, uh, were for NATO, but had been a little bit cowed by the politics on the right. Um, I think that we will uh, reassert it. We will, we will hold the course. I'm just unfortunate that now this has shaken European um, assurance. By the way, what is Taiwan thinking? And maybe given a little bit of succor, a little bit of, uh, of motivation or, or, or you know, encouragement to Vladimir Putin, um, and they, whose one of his main objectives is exactly that, with Ukraine was to uh, to cleave the alliance and separate us, divide us. All right, Peter Zwack, former United States Army Brigadier General, good to get your opinion on the program as always, Peter.